Good afternoon. I am Omari Whipple. I am Paris Thomas. And I am Jamie Samuel. And we are consultants at Brighter Solutions LLC. And today we are here to go over our strategic analysis of Ferrari and give you all our recommended strategy. Uh, just a brief overview of what we're going to discuss today. We're going to be go going over your history and background, also your mission and vision statement. We're going to give a SWOT analysis of Ferrari. We're also going to go over the strategic issues that you all face. And then we're going to give our recommended strategy to uh, mitigate the, the effects of that strategic issue. And then we're going to go over how to implement that recommended strategy, the financial ratios, and then we'll conclude. Ferrari was founded in 1947 in Maranello, Italy by Enzo Ferrari. It became very recognizable during the 1950s, more, most recognizable, in fact, uh, because of the Formula One racing championships that you all won. Um, we know that you all produce exclusive luxury sports vehicles. Um, and we also know, according to brand finance, that you all have the most powerful brand um, in the world, actually. So, and then finally, we know that you all employ a low production volume strategy. This means that you all produce a very small quantity of cars, but at a very high quality. Um, you all focus on exclusivity of your vehicle, um, which drives the powerful brand that you all have. Your current mission statement is, we build cars similar to Ducati's excellence in the world over and continue to put a ring on both road and track. These creations are that fuel that fuel the fancy horse on the peripheries and generate a world of dreams for the nation. So a good mission statement is supposed to have nine components. It's supposed to talk about customers, products or services, market, technology, concern for survival, growth, and profitability, philosophy, self-concept, concern for public image, and concern for employees. You guys only have about four or five of those components. Revised statement that we have for you all reads: We build cars unique to current such as performance that serve as symbols for Ducati's excellence all over the world. We use the latest technology to build both road and track that attract consumers in order to match our desired profits with our distinct brand. We work to empower and motivate our employees in order to continue delivering new creations, which fuel the fancy horse legend and generate a world of dreams and emotions. The revised statement that we have for you all is comprised of all nine of those components. Your vision statement is currently Ferrari, the Italian excellence that makes the world turn. We provide this to say, at Ferrari, we will strive for excellence in everything we do, the Italian way which makes the world turn. So after lunch, we'll be talking about the SWOT analysis that we came up with. The SWOT analysis is a tool that is used to analyze the company's internal strengths and weaknesses, as well as analyze their external opportunities and threats. And Ferrari, one of the strengths that Ferrari has is that they're the market leader for the luxury performance uh, market in, throughout Europe, in France and Italy, Spain and Switzerland, as well as the Asia Pacific in Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, Japan, Indonesia, and also Australia. Another strength that Ferrari has is that they have a low production car strategy, which keeps the brand exclusive uh, throughout their vehicles with rarity and exclusivity. Another strength of Ferrari is that it is one of the most recognizable luxury vehicle brands in the world due to their prints and horses, as you've seen, which is a staple of their brand. Another weakness that Ferrari has is that it's unable to supply adequate financing to its dealers and clients who are trying to you know, finance a vehicle or the dealers are trying to help the client finance the vehicle through them. Another weakness that Ferrari has is that they are currently using external consultants to staff administrative functions, which is costing them more administrative costs in the long run. Another weakness that we've seen is that Ferrari's market share in luxury performance car market has declined 4.1% from 2013 to 2014, and as well as 5.3% in their sports car market. Now we're going to go over some external opportunities that you all face. We know that Ferrari's customer base is directly impacted by per capita income of the countries in which they operate. So you all operate in over 60 markets globally, um, and in those 60 markets, you, your ability to sell vehicles is directly correlated to 
per capita income. So the more income people have, the more likely they are to buy products. We also know that emerging markets have seen substantial growth in personal wealth and disposable income. This means that, uh, it, well, this presents an opportunity for Ferrari to expand into emerging markets that are seeing more personal wealth and disposable income. Um, we also know that customer preferences are shifting to more fuel efficient vehicles with zero emissions. So you all created the LaFerrari, which was your first hybrid vehicle, um, but you all also have potential to grow in that market and also uh, reduce your carbon footprint. Next, we're gonna cover some external threats that your company faces. We know that automotive, automotive groups such as Volkswagen AG have greater financial resources and bargaining power based on their volume of production. So the fact that Volkswagen produces more vehicles allows them to sell more vehicles, which allows them to generate more financial resources uh, for their company. And the bargaining power comes from their ability to reach a larger con uh, consumer base based on their volume of production. Uh, we also know that Ferrari's current manufacturing facilities are both located in Italy, Italy, excuse me, um, and they're also located on seismic land. Uh, this increases the potential for natural disasters, which would completely wipe out your, you all's production capabilities. Um, we also know, finally, that the cost of developing and applying new uh, automotive technology for these high-performance uh, sports cars that you all produce is rising based on increased competition in the market and in the industry. The strategic issue that we found for you all at Ferrari is that the only two manufacturing facilities you have in Marinella and Molina, Italy, are located on seismic land, meaning that they have higher chances of incurring natural disasters. And if that was to happen, the facilities will be contaminated, there will be power shortages, as well as labor unrest. So with the strategic issue in mind, our recommended strategy is that Ferrari uh, builds a new manufacturing facility in Mexico. Here's the rationale behind that. Building another facility in Mexico poses a backup plan, so it's for you all to be proactive instead of reactive. Also, a damaged facility will result in production being stopped and it will be a loss of sales for you all. Also, the locations, like I mentioned earlier, they, are able, they have a chance to have things such as natural disasters like hurricanes and tornadoes, and again, that could stop your sales. And in Mexico, there are lower labor costs, which saves Ferrari money building the salaries and wages paid to workers. Next, we're gonna go into what it takes to implement our strategy. So to start out our implementation plan, uh, we, will, we will need to speak with uh, Ferrari top management and board of directors to discuss moving this new manufacturing facility to Mexico. Traditionally, Ferrari has stayed and remained uh, headquartered in Italy, so this would be a big move to, to go over with directors of the board and top management. Um, next, we'll have to conduct thorough research on Mexico in order to find the most cost-efficient land to purchase for this new manufacturing facility. Um, next, we're going to have to set goals and objectives for Ferrari to meet based on the finishing of their new manufacturing facility. So these goals will include um, building goals, so when we want to have the facility, uh, the manufacturing facility completed by. Also, when we're going to need all the purchasing uh, to purchase all of the equipment needed for the facility, and then also finally when uh, you you'll finally begin to produce products in this new facility. Um, next, fourth, we're going to have to meet with land developers in Mexico uh, and come to an agreement on the land uh, that you all will need to purchase to develop this new facility. Five will be finalize the agreement to purchase the land and make the purchase for the land for the new manufacturing facility. And then after that, you'll have to make sure that all of the required paperwork and uh, the legal paperwork will be completed so Ferrari is in accordance with all governmental regulations that Mexico has. The next step in the implementation plan will be to build the new manufacturing facility. Now, based on our research, based on uh, one of your competitors, Audi. Um, they actually recently built a manufacturing facility in Mexico worth $1.3 billion. That's how much it costs for them to build this new facility. 
Um, based on our calculations, we took the percentage of Audi sales uh, as compared to the percentage of Ferrari sales in order to come up with uh, the cost for our new facility. Based on that, we came up with the cost of $56 million to build this new manufacturing facility. Um, after that, you'll have to hire 2,500 new employees to work this manufacturing, manufacturing facility. And then after we do that, the next step is to train the employees of how to produce the vehicle the Ferrari way. Ferrari has an extensive training program which lasts like over 40 hours of extensive training which to have qualified workers to work at their factory. Uh, the next step will, will be to conduct multiple inspections throughout the year on the new facility. You know, just to make sure that it's functioning at its optimal level and that we're meeting all, all annual objectives at the facility. So as we get into the financial ratios and the projected return on investment for our new strategy, uh, we started out with the liquidity ratio. The liquidity ratio. I have the pleasure of doing the current ratio. And the current ratio is used to determine how quick a company can meet its short-term debt obligation. And as you see, in 2013, Ferrari liquidity ratio was 21.35. And it jumped to 2014 at 25.97. As we've seen that in a recent year, at 2015, it is now at 16.13, which shows a, a substantial decrease, about 30, 37% from 2014 to 2015. For our strategy, to, in order to get our additional investment of $56 million, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna have 1550 uh, debt, debt and common stock issuance uh, to finance our, our strategy. So we're gonna use, we're gonna, able, we're gonna end up doing six, 640,000 additional new shares um, to raise our capital. Also, we're gonna issue the other 50% through debt financing. As we move on to our leverage ratio, um, I use the long-term long debt to equity ratio. As you see in 2013, Ferrari had a point, point one four uh, long-term debt to equity ratio. In 2014, it, it rose and increased, which means that you guys took on more debt um, through your long-term financing, and, it, and in 2014, it's at 0.21. Currently, for 2015, the data is currently unavailable, so that's why it's not there. So for the next ratio is the activity ratio. Uh, for the activity, we use the inventory, inventory turnover, which shows that how um, a company is able to sell its inventory in a reasonable amount of time. Um, 2013, 20, the, the 2013 data was currently unavailable, but in 2014, um, the ratio was 5.65, and in 2015, the ratio was 5.47. That drop of roughly uh, 40, 42, 52 points um, shows that um, your company, Ferrari, um, it was not selling its vehicles fast enough off the lot. Um, in 20, and for the next ratio is the profitability ratio, and for that one, we used uh, the return on investing operating capital. Um, as you see, in 2013, the, the data was unavailable, unfortunately. In 2014, the data was at 13.94, which was the ratio number. In 2015, it jumped and increased, so which means that the operating investments that you guys were um, were doing, uh, you start you start to see uh, an increased benefit of that. And in 2015, the data for that is at 17.24. Um, for the growth ratio, uh, we used a earnings per share uh, calculation. In 2013, the EPS uh, was 1.27, and in 2014, it was 1.38, which is an increase. And in 2015, it jumped up to 1.58. EPS is used as its earnings per share, which is used um, to attract new investors. That means that investors um, earn an additional $1.58 on every stock that they have ownership in within your company. And as um, far, far as our um, expected or projected ROI, um, I did the EBIT. Uh, 2015 divided by the, our initial investment, which was the 56 million. So our EBIT was, or well, the EBIT of your company was 440 million, uh, 320 thousand dollars, and our initial investment is 56 million. So once you divide that, you get a number of 7.93. Well, obviously, if you times that by 100, you get 7.93. Roughly 8 percent is the um, projected return on investment for our new um, manufacturing facility that we recommend um, for our strategy. In conclusion, and to wrap up, uh, we have gone over the history and background of Ferrari. We've also gone over your all's mission and vision statement, as well as the SWOT analysis provided by my colleagues, um, the strategic issue that you all face, and then our recommended strategy, which is to build a new manufacturing facility in Mexico.
We went over our implementation plan and then the cost of our strategy. Um, we also went over the financial ratios and the current financial position of the firm. So we'd like to thank you. I am Omari Whitmore. I am Jaleen Sanders. I am Paris Thomas. And we are Brighter Solutions.